In addition to being a very powerful tool for writing music for the printed page, Sibelius is also a very powerful tool for writing music to accompany a video. Let me show you some of the features on here. I'm, going to, I'm in the, the Play tab, and the Video group is over here. The Video button itself allows you to add a video, so I'm just going to click on there. Select a video, that one there will do fine, and there's my video appeared on the screen. I've got the transport panel open because it's a very handy way to work when you're writing for video. Because I can take my timeline scrubber here and I can move it back and forward. And you can see that the video is staying in sync with the timeline, with the playback line. The playback line is this green line here. And if I move that back and forward using the transport panel, you can see the video goes back and forward with it. So the video will always stay in sync with the music. Of course I can just press the play button. And the video will play along with it as well. One word of warning, particularly if you're using a PC, the quality of the playback of the video will, de will be determined by the quality of the graphics card and sometimes the amount of RAM you have in your system. The graphics card I have on this machine that I'm using just now isn't the best, so whenever I press play, sometimes the playback of the video is a little jerky, jumpy, you can see it, it's not the smoothest there. That's a problem with my machine, it's not a problem with Sibelius. Sibelius works perfectly well if you, with this if you have a more powerful machine. But I can certainly show you the features in action. So this is a, the video window. I can turn it off by just closing it there. But it's a floating panel, so to get it back, I would go to View, then Panels, and then there's my video there, and it brings it back. I can adjust the size of the playback window here by using these controls here. Where you need to be careful with this is if you go too large, trying then to minimise it back can sometimes be a pain because these buttons will have disappeared off the screen. What you can do in that case is you would go back to the Play tab under the video, and you can use these controls here. Ideally, if you're going to be doing this a lot, you would want to have two separate monitors and your video playback in one and your score on the other. This slider here is a volume control for the video audio, so any audio that's attached that's part of the video, you can adjust the volume for it there. Bear in mind though that Sibelius isn't a video editor, so try and get all these volumes. If you want to bring audio in and out, you would want to do that in the video before you bring it into Sibelius. But what I can do there is just take it right down to zero. That's what I'm going to do here. Which only leaves this wee icon here, the wee clapper board. So I'm going to show you how that works and what it is. This is for creating a thing called a hit point. Now a hit point in, in video is when something specific happens. So keep your eyes on the video here. I'm going to move the playback line through the, through the video. There's a good point. When your man in the rabbit costume appears. At that point there. It's that, this point here in, in the, the score. I'm going to create a hit point. Just by pressing that button there. But I can also create other hit points in real time. I don't have to stop the, video, stop the playback and, and do a lot. I can do it in real time. Either using this button or this button on the ribbon. I'm going to do it over here. So I'm going to press play, and it'll play from this point. And later on, there's um, a lady appears wearing a purple top. I'm going to um, make a hit point when she appears. Here we go. Keep your eyes up here. There she is. And there's my second hit point. I say I could have done it there, I could have done it up here, either way is fine. So the hit points are where specific things happen in the video, and you're then tasked to write your music around about those hit points. So if someone, if let's say your, your video was a cartoon, Tom and Jerry, and Tom the cat gets hit in the face with a frying pan. At that point, you would make a hit point, and then you would write your music around about that to emphasise 
the smacking in the face with the frying pan. But what can you do with them in here? Well, a couple of things to be aware of them. Um, first of all, look where this one is. This is beat, uh, sorry, bar 7, beat 4, one uh, sixteen hundredths into beat 4. So it's just after the start of beat 4 of bar 7. 13.4 seconds into the score. However, let's say I decide I want this to go a wee bit faster. So instead of 112, I want it to go 124. Well, now that's moved because that, remember, is in sync with the video, not with the score. So this will move around your score if you constantly change tempos. And again, I can demonstrate that by playing from here. And at this point here, remember, is when the rabbit appeared. So let's try this. She's now back before that point. And there's my rabbit. Okay, so it's... It's, it's worth keeping in mind that these are not fixed on the score, they're fixed to the video. Now, what we're looking at there is the time, 13.4 seconds now into the score. It's now bar 8, beat 2, almost at the end of beat 2, and it's called hit 01. That's not very descriptive, is it? So what I can do up here on my hit points, I can bring this down and go to edit hit point, and I can rename the first one. So I can just double click on it, and I can call it anything I like. I'm going to call it rabbit, because it's when the rabbit appears. And the second one, I'm going to call that one purple, because that's when the lady in purple appears. You can see you can also decide what else appears in your hit point here, and you can delete them, you can edit individual ones, you can shift them all, which means you can move them all backwards or forwards by a, a set amount of time. I'm just going to leave it like that, click OK. And that is now rabbit, and over here is purple when the lady in purple appears. I can also go to my time code area here, and this lets me add time code to my score. So for example, if I decide I'm going to put it above every bar, and I want it in 0.1 of a second, that's a good place to put it. Let's have the duration at the end of the score as well. Now up here, I can determine where the video starts. I'm going to, at the moment, I'm going to have it start at the start of the score. I could decide I want to start it two minutes into the score, or I want to start it from two minutes into the video. These are options that are available to me. I'm going to leave it set to start of the score as now. Time code above every bar at 0.1 of a second. There we go. That's now starting to look a bit more like someone writing for video. So you now see exactly how far into the score each of these bars are. Sorry, how far, into the, how far into the video each of these bars are. And you can write your music accordingly around about them. We have a problem though. And the problem is this. Let me drag this across and watch the video. You can see at this point there, the video stops. That's the end of my video. Now I happen to know that that is 2 minutes and 8 seconds long. But my score is 2 minutes and 23 seconds long. Now, the, what I would do if I was starting from scratch, I would then rewrite my score. But I like my score, I want the, the video and the score to both be played in their entirety, as they are. So, there's a plugin that can help me. What I need to do, I'm going to select the entire score, so Control A. I'm going to go to Note Input, and my plugins, and there's one there called Fit Selection to Time. And when I do that, I can tell Sibelius that my end time has now got to be 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Click OK. And what it's done has been it's changed my metronome mark at bar one to now fit my, my video. So now if I go to bar one, I can show you that. That's there. So my new metronome mark is 137.8. And if I scroll to the end over here, you can see the video now fades out just at the same time as the end of the score. Nice wee powerful feature when you use the two of them together like that. Now, of course, once you've created your music, remember, Sibelius is not a video editor. 
So what you have to then do is to export it. So I'll go to the file. I'm going to export audio. I'll then export that as an audio file, as a WAV file usually. And I would then go to a separate video editor and drag in my video and my audio that I've just created and combine the two of them in the video, in the video editor. So writing for video in Sibelius is actually fairly straightforward once you're aware of the features that are available to you.